What is going on everybody? My name is Wally and I am here in this series to give you a better idea on how to potentially increase your game in the PvP area of Destiny. Now in my opinion the best way to do that is to take a look at every single map and analyze it the best ways possible. And this series will do just that. The entire idea of this series is to look at some of the maps, some of the classes, some of the weapon types, and some of the general setups and mechanics of PvP to give you a better shot out there against some of the tougher opponents and potentially some of the toughest opponents you may yet face in this game. In this first video we're going to start with the scout rifle and sniper rifle setups for long to mid tier ranged maps. Now these maps generally will be Bastion on Mars and of course First Light on the Moon. Now there are some other mid tier maps that do come into occurrence in some of the PvP, but these two maps tend to be the largest where engagements are generally at mid to long distance and occasionally you'll find yourself fighting at short range, but a majority of the time you're going to be using weapons that fit those distance gaps. And in my opinion, the best weapons for the job will be the scout rifle, and as a secondary, you most likely want a sniper rifle. The weapon I am using in this clip is the Crusader 1. Now the Crusader 1 is the vendored version of the scout rifle from New Monarchy, but it is comparable to the Vision of Confluence. But a simple thing to remember with the scout rifles is a majority of the slow firing scout rifles in this game, minus the Minnanoch, is of course a four shot headshot and about a six to seven shot body shot. So the thing with scout rifles to always remember is that you want to hit your opponent in the head. That's the only thing you really should be aiming for. Now, of course, not everyone is a pro. I most certainly am not a pro. You are not expected to get headshots every single time you shoot, but you will notice that kill times of opponents is significantly less when you are aiming for those beautiful yellow numbers. Keep in mind though, the scout rifle is a bit tricky up close. I would heavily recommend if you do find yourself fighting in short range and you do not have a shotgun as your secondary or even a fusion rifle, as your secondary and melee and super are out of the question, I would highly recommend hip firing your opponent. You're going to get a little bit more from it as you generally wouldn't get from aiming down the sights as it is a bit clunky in close range as the gun and weapon type is intended to be. Now the sniper rifle that I am using in this clip is Praetis Revenge which is the rage op from Vault of Glass. If you do not have the opportunity to get yourself a Praetis Revenge, fear not because there is a Crucible Vendor Sniper Rifle that almost is identical with them, varying in stats here and there, but is pretty much the identical version of it and that is the final boss. Either way, both snipers have the same assortments of scopes, starting with the Ambush moving into the mid-tier and then of course the mid-zoom scope. I personally prefer the mid-zoom which is the most zoom you can get out of the sniper rifle because on some of these longer range maps you do need that range. You aren't really needed to use the ambush scope in some of these situations because most of the time when you're sniping you're not 15 to 20 feet away you're a good flag or two away from potential targets so keep that in mind a sniper with mid to long tier scopage is fantastic if you do have yourself an icebreaker or patience in time both those sniper rifles work incredibly well on both of these maps for the final weapon that i am using i am using the thunderlord exotic now i've chosen to use my exotic in my last heavy weapon slot and the reason I've chosen to do that is because I personally believe that the Thunderlord is potentially the best LMG, if not the best exotic in the game, especially for PvP. And I'm going to break down the reasons why it is so useful, especially on some of these longer range maps. The reason the Thunderlord is as effective as it is, is it acts as a slow fire rate in terms of damage and a high fire rate in terms of rate of fire LMG which basically is a mix of the two best worlds in LMG terms. It has enough ability to dish out enough damage quickly, but it hits incredibly hard. 63 damage on a headshot is enough to three shot any opponent you run into or potentially three to four shot them. With its rate of fire, you will see yourself getting quite a few kills and you will have the ability to stand up to most of the other legendary and exotic LMGs currently in the game. In my honest opinion, the best way to play these maps is to play them from the outside angles and look in. You have a scout rifle, your entire goal potentially is to cut off flank routes 
around the outsides or outskirts of the map. The best way to do this, of course, is to play on the outside and move effectively with your team covering from within, but playing on the mid-tier of the map. Most of these maps, most of the time, I am playing on the inside of the map and looking to spawns. I do have some of the spawns memorized, and after enough play time on all of the maps, you too will understand where your enemies may potentially spawn on either clash or control. I highly recommend that you get enough map knowledge and understand the flow of every single map when you play, but generally with control, maps flow from initial flag cap to B flag cap, then back and forth on B until one team walks away with a victory, then back into whatever home cap you originally had, then you'll flip spawns. So keep that in mind when you go out there and fight. I highly recommend scout rifles as your primary weapon setup for long range maps. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. That will do it for me. I'm out.